Hi, welcome to Best in Tesla. The German automakers are in big trouble. The tsunami of new electric cars coming from China and other EV startups together with Tesla is happening right now and much faster than what the Germans were prepared for. They fought the Japanese in the 70s with high quality and premium cars that the Japanese could not match. But as a German automotive expert is saying, the competitive advantage is eroding with the switch to electric vehicles, as software is becoming the new hardware. But the Germans are not prepared for that either. But let me show you what is going on, and then you can see if you would choose the German EV over the competition. Because the Germans are getting hit on all segments. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. The Chinese invasion with the affordable good EV is going to be like the Japanese invasion of affordable ICE cars back in the 1970s. But there seems to be a big difference, because back in the 70s, German automakers fought off the Japanese with high quality and premium cars that the Japanese could not match. But Volkswagen actually have a big problem here, if you ask me. Because I have been test driving both the ID4 and the ID3, and they were nice cars. Nothing special, but just a decent electric car. But it was not a premium experience, and the ID3 was filled with cheap piano plastic and a little plastic screen with very bad software, so nothing really felt premium about this car. So just as I said in my review two years ago, it's a nice EV, but it's just too expensive for what you get. And that is of course partly because an EV is still very expensive to build for the legacy automakers. They are not really making any money yet on selling their EVs. So they are cutting a lot of corners to make the car as affordable as possible. So that is why they don't use premium materials, but just cheap plastic, because they are already losing money with cheap materials. And now we have the Chinese coming for Europe with more affordable EVs, but ones that can actually match the German EV automakers, EVs on specs like the MG4. It is a direct competitor with Volkswagen's ID3. They are very similar on specs in acceleration and top speed and range and charging speed, so the ID3 doesn't really come with anything the MG4 doesn't have. But the MG4 does come with a little bit more than what you would get with your ID3. Like the MG4 does come with a little tow hitch that can tow 500 kilos. The ID3 does not. The MG4 can do vehicle to load and charge up stuff. The ID3 cannot. And then there is the software. As I just talked about in my new show, Alex from E4 Electric had just gone from a promoter and advocate for the ID4 to hate it because of all the software problem that just keeps stacking up, with still no over-the-air update, as promised, one and a half year later. And the Volkswagen apps is being so painfully slow it's almost useless. So the MG4 will probably come with better software than the ID3 as well, as the Chinese are actually quite good at making software. But Volkswagen on the other hand is in big trouble with their software. That is even their official reason to why they have fired Herbert Dees because of the disaster in the software. With the software company carried, they invested six billion dollars in. So it's not just the Tesla fanboy that are saying that Volkswagen has trouble with their software, both Volkswagen themselves are saying it, and so does former advocate for the IDs that used to love the user interface of the software to now hate it. Actually, Porsche has negotiated a get out clause for the new operating system Volkswagen software subsidiary Carrot is developing for the group if it can deliver on time or good quality, which is a sign that Porsche CEO 
Oliver Bloom, that is now also Volkswagen CEO, doesn't have faith in them to deliver on this. If the CEO doesn't believe he can deliver good software on time, why should we? So the MG4 is also about $10,000 cheaper than the ID3. But you're not going to get that premium feeling with the Volkswagen car compared to the Chinese as we used to. The Chinese has become very good at building EVs and the Germans are still learning and it shows. So my question is, why would you buy an ID3 over the MG4? The Germans can't really differentiate themselves to make the customer make the choice of the German EV over the Chinese because the price is premium, but the EVs are not. Also because software is becoming the new hardware. This is why now and even more in the future, the differentiator will be the software itself. And the Germans do not have great software. And that is a big problem. And another great example is Winfast, the Winfast VF8 I have talked about before, which is coming to Europe and the US soon. We'll have a starting price of 46,000 euro. And as I said in my new show, it is a very well built car that feels very, very nice. The car did actually feel a bit more premium as I saw it at the Full Charge live show than the ID4. And that is not just me saying that. Sandy Monroe is in Vietnam right now visiting the Winfast factory and checking out the car. He was very impressed with the car and thought it was very well built and had great feeling inside and the software was actually very impressive and looked very smooth on the big screen in the car but also on the mobile app. And it had a very good voice assistant and many other cool features. So I would personally choose the Vinfast VF8 over the ID4. It just felt better, more premium, even with cooled back seats and stuff like the ID4 does not have, and with much, much better software. And the Vinfast can actually match the ID4 on range, but the Vinfast is much more fun car to drive as well, as it can do a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 5.5 seconds. UID4 will not, and it can charge with 200 kilowatts and has a 10 year warranty of 200,000 kilometers. The ID4 has not and can only charge with 135 kilowatt or the most expensive version about 170 kilowatts. So here the ID4 pretty much loses on all counts, but is about 10,000 euros more expensive to buy than the VF8. So my question again is, why would you buy the ID4 over the Vinfast VF8? I know I would personally prefer the VF8 for sure. So much better value for money and much more premium car in my humble opinion. So. The Germans really seem to be facing an uphill battle against the Chinese in the medium segment. So that could really hurt someone like Volkswagen. But then we have the real premium Germans car like the BMW, the Audis and the Mercedes. But here Tesla is quickly becoming the first choice when it comes to EVs. As we have seen some of the reviews of the German made Model Y from the German car reviewers. It is just very well built, really nothing to point your finger finger at, you might prefer the more luxury interior of a BMW than the Model Y, but someone like me would actually much rather prefer this clean look of the Tesla and the luxury software you'll get with the Tesla and the luxury performance as Tesla beats the BMW iX3 on all specs. The BMW iX3, for example, has up to 460 one kilometers of WLTP range. The max charging speed is 150 kilowatt or 90 kilometers in 10 minutes. The fastest zero to 100 kilometers you can get is 6.8 seconds. Top speed for your Germans <laughs> is 180 kilometers an hour. And the trunk is a 510 liters and it has no frunk. It may tow up to 750 kilos and only rear wheel drive where the Tesla Model Y, you will get up to 533 kilometers WLTP range, max charging speed of 250 kilowatt or 120 kilometers in just five minutes. And the fastest zero to 100 kilometers is 3.7 seconds. Top speed
speed 250 kilometers an hour, the trunk can hold 700 liters, and it does have a trunk of 125 liters as well, and it may tow 1,600 kilos on the tow hitch, and the long range and the performance both come as all-wheel drive. So the BMW iX3 loses on every single spec, not as roomy, can't tow as much, not as fun to drive, can't charge as fast, and don't have the range of the Model Y, and the software in the Tesla is just so much better. Of course, you can always find something with the BMW that the Tesla doesn't have, but look at this list. And remember, the starting price of the BMW is about six to seven thousand dollars more, depending on your country, of course. But again, I have to ask, if you are not a Tesla fanboy, or you are not a BMW fanboy, but just an everyday consumer and was looking for a new electric vehicle in this category at this price point and were presented with this list I just showed you, you will save money but get a much better overall car with a better charging network. It will be open to the BMW as well, but it cannot charge as fast, and it will be more expensive for the BMW to charge at the Tesla chargers and get less range at the same time, and the car cost more. If nobody told you this was a Tesla and this was a BMW, you just saw the list here, with these prices and these specs, I would bet you 10 out of 10 would pick the Tesla Model Y is just the logical choice. Then there is the look. You might prefer the look over the other. I really don't prefer the BMW's nostrils, but <laughs> that's just me. And you might prefer the look of the interior of the BMW, but I really don't. I think it looks very old school and outdated and just messy. Looks like a Blackberry to me. I much prefer the clean look of the Tesla with the much bigger, beautiful quality screen in the middle with awesome software that gets updates all the time instead of that little plastic screen in the BMW that is almost smaller than the very visible and big vents in the middle of the car that kind of grabs most of your attention straight away. And it is not just Tesla that are doing this. This is the interior of the Polestar 3. Very clean clean and nice looking in my opinion. The only thing missing is that the screen was horizontal instead of vertical, as it will not be very good for movies and in-car games, which will be part of the future very soon. But at least they have more screen to play with than with the little BMW screen. I will never understand why anyone would prefer this over this. And this is kind of the look we see from all of the Chinese automakers as well. And this is the e-tron. Is it just me that get the feeling that German legacy automakers are a little déjà vu from BlackBerry versus iPhone moment? Everyone was copying iPhone's look in the beginning, but BlackBerry was not. And now we see Chinese copying Tesla's look, but the Germans is not. Hmm. And Tesla will for the rest of the year probably produce 45,000 Model Ys in Germany, in the Berlin factory. And next year, it should have a production capacity of 380,000 units. So we will see how much they will be able to make, maybe 250, 300,000 Model Ys next year from that factory in the heart of Germany. So that's another thing. Tesla will simply just flood Germany and the European streets with the Tesla Model Y. But even before, the Germans has already spoken. The BMW iX3 has sold about 2,600 units in Germany year to date, where the Model Y has sold more than 22,000 units in Germany. Even if we take all of BMW's models, the iX3, the iX, the i4 and the i3, BMW has only combined sold of all its models in Germany, year to date, 16,000 units. And Tesla is just about to start the flooding of the streets with Tesla's Model Y. And BMW is already so far behind Tesla, they almost seem irrelevant. The top three EVs in Germany year to date is Tesla Model Y, the Fiat 500e and the Tesla Model 3. And BYD was even selected by a German car rental company, Sixth, to deliver 100,000 EVs over the next six years starting this year. Why was that not a German car company that got that deal? That is very 
scary. So I really think the Germans are in big trouble. The tsunami that is coming with all the Chinese and Winfast and all the other startups together with Tesla is like nothing we have seen before. And the Germans can't really keep up. So most of the German automakers are also looking to electrify their fleet in record time and are constantly announcing new EV models. The only problem is that many of the competitors are currently growing faster. And we know the Volkswagen Group lost the second place in the EV race to BYD here in 2022. In Germany, of all places, the homeboys have lost significant market share between January to September. The home advantage has been squandered. Like Simon Snorra, partner and experienced automotive expert at strategy consultancy Oliver Weyman said the strong international position of German automakers was also based on excellent powertrain and high comfort. This competitive advantage is eroding with the switch to electric vehicles. And he continued, it is an alarming signal that Volkswagen, Audi, BMW and Mercedes-Benz, for example, have not yet succeeded in gaining a foothold in China with their electric vehicles. Remember Remember that in the first half of 2022, China had 29% new empty vehicles in the world's largest car market. So if less than 29% of your production is new energy vehicles, so some kind of plug-in, well, you will shrink in size in China this year. And no one of the German automakers is at that level. And the Chinese don't really want their EVs because they are not high tech enough. It is so bad that Opel recently cancelled its plans to expand into China due to geopolitical risk, sure, but this is 32% of the entire world's car market. If you just ignore it, you will shrink very, very fast. And someone like Volkswagen does have 40% of all their sales being in China. So that would hurt them very, very badly. And 50% of the profit that comes from these sales in China, they have to give to the Chinese automakers that are actually making the cars for them in China, where someone like Tesla gets all the profits for themselves. So as they still lose money on their EVs, as Volkswagen has admitted, so has Ford as well, well, they have no power to lower the price to increase demand, unless they want to lose even more money. This is where Tesla is in a league of its own. If Tesla sees demand tapering off, they can just lower the price as they earn close to 30% on their Model Y in China. And remember, we have seen Tesla raise their price of the Model Y by as much as 25% during the last couple of years. So they could lower the price again 25% if they had to and exponentially grow their addressable market. Remember, a good rule of thumb is that for every $5,000 you lower your price, you will double your addressable market. So if Tesla just lowered their price 10%, they could easily double their addressable market and still earn money on their cars, actually more than most other OEMs. A flexibility no other OEMs on the planet has right now with their EVs. Experts believe that German automakers still face two or three difficult transition years with stagnating or declining market share for electric cars. On the other hand, this is due to the fact that some of the domestic brands have significantly longer delivery times than their competitors as a result of a lack of preparation. On the other hand, the highly industrialized electric architecture of the Germans are just coming onto the market in the middle of the decade. Yes, they are moving very, very slowly. It could really hurt them. I don't think we will see a stagnation as the German expert expect during the next three to four years. I think we will see a decline. So, the Germans are losing market share in the home country and can't really seem to get a foothold in China. And in the US, the ID4 sales were actually down in the first half of 2022. This is not looking good. I hope the Germans can find a way out of this. But with the very slow speed the automakers are known for, I have a hard time seeing them being able to do this in time. But I'm crossing my fingers that they will find a way. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>